Look at that little baby rooster tail. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Check out that catfish. Yeah, I pretty much just built a deck into it. It was just a normal empty boat. And then I turned it into this little bass boat. Well, that's pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> what is going on guys? And welcome back to another fishing adventure. So I just pulled the John boat out of the garage. Here it is. And I'm just going through the motor, checking all the spark plugs, checking the oil, checking the lower gear unit oil. I just got one gallon of ethanol free gas. We're gonna put some gas in the tank for the very first time and start up this motor for the first time in probably seven months. So the bad thing about me is I'm pretty lazy and I didn't do anything to store the motor. I just kind of threw it in the garage and let it sit there. So she may be hard to start, but uh, we'll see. But about seven months ago, whenever I ran this motor, I did run the motor with Seafoam Marine Pro in the gas. So I'm thinking that's gonna help out a lot. It should be good. I already took the top off, so let's go ahead and check a few things and then we will start her up. So first off, I want to check the oil. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the oil is still fresh, still new. I'm pretty sure I went through all this stuff six or seven months ago when I took it out for that first time. Again, we're gonna check it and just make sure it's all good. Yes, that did the trick. Okay, thank you Lord. All right, so this is now going to be my screwdriver that stays on the boat at all times. I'm gonna put together a tool kit. Sweet, so I just wanna check this. I'm gonna leave this one in. I just wanna open up this one, let a little bit drop out, and just see how it looks. Make sure it's still a nice blue color. Make sure there's no water in there, you know? I mean, not much is gonna come out, but. All right, she's a little dark, but that still looks good. Still has some blue in it. So I think we're good for a few more months. I'm gonna run the boat around a few more months and then, uh, I'll change that out, but right now it's not necessary. I did go buy more and I have two more bottles in the shed though, so we are set on the gear lube. So let's go ahead and now check the spark plugs. A little dirty, but uh, they look good. So next up I want to check the gap. These little spark plugs on this motor are supposed to be 0.28. So I just wanna make sure that is where they're sitting before we uh, Drop her in the lake. See, she's actually way too big, so I need to push that down. Pushed it down, and we're gonna spread the gap back out to 0.28. She was at about 0.32, too much. All right, that is the perfect gap. Looking good, a little dirty, but she's all right. I do have two new spark plugs that I'm gonna throw in my toolbox and take with me out there on the lake, just in case. All right, so I'm gonna pull the cord and see if any gas shoots out. All right, we should be good. Let me go ahead and check the gap on the second one real quick. Too much, that's around 32 as well. And that's my fault, just because I bought like three of these little tools right here to tell you the gap, and I lose them. So, I didn't have one last time. With new spark plugs, I just threw them in. Again, I'm lazy, all right? I'll get better. I'm not gonna be lazy with the new bass boat. Promise you that. All right, so we're at point twenty-eight. We're ready to go, ready to drop these back in. I guess that's a good thing. There's no gas in the motor, so it should start up. There shouldn't be any old gas residue. Ho I mean, there probably is in the car, but I'm not gonna lie. We'll probably have to run some sea foam, which I do have a whole new can of sea foam just to run through here. But I'm gonna run the motor here at the house for a good like 20 minutes or so, just to get it warmed up. Make sure she starts up good on the lake for me, have no problems. We do have the trolling motor in case the motor doesn't start. That always is great to have to help us back onto the trailer. She's looking good, nice and clean, full of oil, ready to go. All right, first time putting gas in the new gas tank.
about six pulls in. I just needed to pump the primer some more on the actual motor. It says pump it twice, but I pumped it six times just to make sure there's gas in there. Waiting for that. Alright, choke is off. She's still running. She's still not spitting out water though. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and kill it because it's not spitting out water. Let's see if I can clean it out real quick. All right, so she's not spitting out water, so I'm going to get a bucket and put it under there and see if she spits out water that way. I'm just uh, thinking maybe it's not getting enough water from this, from these muffs, which I think I need to get the round muffs, not this long and gated one, to actually fit onto this motor. But it usually takes a second to kick water out, but not that long, and it's pretty scary to run your freaking motor without water spitting out, so. I'm gonna grab a bucket, which I actually see one right there, sweet. Alright, it was spitting whenever I parked it, so it could be clogged up. I couldn't find nothing small enough to shove up in there. But she is starting up perfect and awesome like she's never even been parked. So that is awesome. All right, so I got this hose of the Telltale unplugged. And I can blow through it. And I can feel the air pressure coming out here. So this hose is not stopped up or clogged or anything like that. That's the easiest solution. So that sucks that it's not that. So it may be this vent down here blocked as well. I'm not too sure until we look at it. So... I'm gonna move out this bucket, take that vent off, kind of look inside there, see what's up. Maybe even have to take off the propeller, but... Good thing I wanted to take the boat out tomorrow, right? I thought maybe today, if it was good and running today, we could do it, but... Yeah, we can't take her out like this with no telltale peeing out. Dang it, that sucks, man. I should have closed off the vents and everything. I'm gonna start doing that. Before I park her for a long time, cover this hole, cover those vents down there. That way we can uh, not to worry about it getting clogged or anything. There may be a lot of bolts taken out right here just to find out where this stupid clog is. So no clogs in the hose. I stuck a tool up in there. This little Allen wrench and did not fill anything. All right, so that's not clogged either. That is not good at all. I wish it was clogged and I wish that was a problem because that was super easy to fix. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take off the propeller, which I've actually never done before. So I'm going to take it off, get all the fishing line out of there if there is any. I'm sure there is. Let's go ahead and take this off. I will have to go get a new cotter pin, of course. That sucks, but all part of the process, I guess. If you want to get this boat on the water, which I know we all want to, everyone wants to see it, then we got to get this fixed. There we go. Okay. Oh, that's loose. That is scary. That was loose. I need to uh, check on this boat more often, dude. Jeez. That carter pin saved my life right there. That is so bad. But we'll get her tight. When we put her back on, no fishing string. Look at that. Beautiful. We definitely need some grease on there, though. Jeez. Sorry, motor. I failed you. I failed you. But we're learning. The bad thing about like knowing about these motors is something has to break. For you to learn how to fix it. Unless you're just taking your motor apart for fun. I don't know who does that. I don't do that. That's crazy talk right there. I hate to say it, but we may need a new water pump. So we got some marine grease here. With the grease. Get her nice and good. Nice and greasy. I'm going to go ahead and check my bass boat's propeller too. Check all the oil. Check all the lube. Uh, all the grease. Just see how it is because I just took the guy's word for it that it's good. I have no idea if he's being honest or not. 
he can say anything. That's how people are, you know. They just want to sell what they got. They, they will lie. So I'm sure he took good care of it, but I just want to know for myself and make sure that it's good. And then I can start keeping a log of whenever I change the oil and all that good stuff. And just keep it up to date. So it's never like this, not having any grease on the shaft. Six months ago, I already went through and greased all the stuff up here. So I don't have to worry about that, which is why this is empty. But there was just enough in there for me to do that. So I'm happy about that. The bucket's peeing, does that count? All right, so water was not spitting out of the telltale, which freaking sucks. Uh, I'm guessing it is the water pump. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to take off the lower unit. The uh, water pumps are made of rubber, and if they sit there for a long time, then they go bad. They dry out and they break. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It was working before I parked a boat for seven months, and then now I try to start it seven months later, and it's not pumping water, so it has to be the water pump, right? So taking off the lower unit is pretty simple. There's four bolts you have to take off, and then you have to undo this right here as well. All right, so that is all it takes to get your lower unit off. All right, that actually looks really good. No rust, nothing like that. All right, so now I need to take off these four bolts here, and then I can take this off and check out the impeller. I'm expecting the impeller to be broken with that gasket. No! Oh my gosh, okay. This impeller actually looks great. Dang it, dude, that was supposed to be the problem. But it's not, it's perfect. Oh crap, just lost that pin. There she is. Oh, that sucks. You can see it's wet. It's perfect. There's no damage. There's no dry rot. I was hoping to take this off and this be destroyed. And I know exactly why the water isn't pumping or peeing out the freaking telltale. All right. Well, I guess that means she's clogged somewhere else deeper into the motor. Which sucks because that's more taking apart the motor. All right. So here's where I'm at with this freaking clog. So I took the lower unit back off. And then I ran water through... Each of the holes, I ran water through this here, which goes down to the propeller, and water ran down perfectly and ran out, so there's no clog there. Then I ran water into that hole right there, and water ran out of the vents, and that is where it sucks water in, so no clog there. And then I grabbed the air hose, and I put the air hose up to so that hose right there in the middle of the screen well it took a second but then i heard air shooting out of this so i stuck my finger up to there and felt air coming out of the telltale so that means we don't have a clog in the lower unit and now we don't have a clog going all the way up and out so that means water should be able to get out of this no problem because I just shoved about 80 pounds of air through there. Did we push something out? I'm not sure because I wasn't standing over here whenever it happened. I, w I didn't have my hand here and I didn't feel anything shoot out. But like I said, it took a second for the air to get out. So it's possible that we got the clog out. I'm not too sure, but uh, I know now for a fact it is not clogged. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lower unit back on. All right, so I got the motor all back together. I even adjusted all this, right? It got loose and it went down, so I wasn't able to lock it into place with a tilt, but now it locks in place on its own. I could get it to lock into place, but I had to press down on this bar to make it happen. But now it's back to normal and I can do it hands-free pretty much. Also, although I didn't have to change anything out, taking off the lower unit was awesome practice. I've seen a ton of videos on how to do it, just for like, you know, basic maintenance on these outboard motors, but I've never actually done it. So that was my first time doing it, and now I can comfortably do it. So that was awesome practice. I'm going to slowly learn everything about these outboards as it happens. Oh! <gasps> 
She's peeing. Yes. Yes. Instantly. Oh, we got the quag out. Thank you, Lord. Oh my gosh. I went through so much trouble yesterday getting rid of that freaking quag. Look at that little baby rooster tail. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry it's taking so long to uh, get this drum boat out. It's just don't build a drum boat or don't finish a drum boat in the middle of winter. That's that's a problem. Just bad timing. Uh, if I was going onto a little pond that wasn't so deep, sure, I'd go out there, right? But I'm going to a reservoir that is 50 foot deep. So little boats like this are not meant to be on this huge lake. And if the wind changes on me, it can get very dangerous. So, but tomorrow is supposed to be perfect. But guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're taking this boat out tomorrow, dang it. So subscribe for that and I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Ah!